Good afternoon, Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for the 18th of October, 2016. Taking a look at the Atlantic Basin this afternoon, not much to worry about this disorganized area of low pressure. Trying to develop here more concentrated to the north of Hispaniola between there and Bermuda, which is up here, solidly in the Bermuda Triangle, as it were. Strong upper-level winds will prevent this from becoming too well organized, but Water temperatures are certainly warm enough, and it's likely that this will become a subtropical storm, maybe a tropical storm. What's the difference? Well, think of a subtropical storm as sort of a hybrid, kind of a mix of a mid-latitude system with some warm core characteristics and some cold core characteristics, mainly that the winds are displaced from the center. It'll have more of a comma shape to it, perhaps, and it does now. You can kind of see that overall. The energy is spread out and it's not very concentrated like we see. As an example, this area trying to blossom down here in the Gulf of Tawanapec, much more concentrated uh, because it's purely tropical in nature, whereas this has different elements coming together. It's rather complicated, but the end result is you can get a fairly windy, stormy system, but it's not quite as compact and well-defined as a tropical storm or a hurricane. Sometimes they transition all the way over and become a full-blooded tropical storm or hurricane, but in this case, even if it does, I don't think it'll be a bother to the U.S. East Coast directly. You can see the upper-level winds is a really sharp trough in here, and the upper-level winds are very strong blowing across the top of the system, so that's not going to allow for much in the way of development. Westerly winds cutting across a good deal of the tropics right now. Another sharp trough out here. So the hurricane season is winding down in terms of widespread areas for development. And uh, you know what? It's almost November. We're still just uh, less than a couple of weeks away from November. And that's the last month of the hurricane season, at least via calendar. And you know, we might still see something try to develop in here. And then out over the open ocean during November and December. It wouldn't surprise me to get some sort of a rogue storm getting its act together out there. I mean, Alex did back in January, So, and the Atlantic is very warm. But the threat to the United States is starting to diminish. You never say never, but I don't see anything that leads me to any worries right now. Looking at the vorticity signature at the 5,000-foot level for our system, it's actually designated Invest 99L, believe it or not. We've come back around and used up all the 90s again, and now we're at 99L. Remember, that's what the Hurricane Center does to designate these areas as investigation areas. They give the letters L for Atlantic. It's actually AL, 90 or 99 or whatever, but we in the weather world, uh, hurricane, social media, blogosphere, weather geeks, whatever, uh, we just shorten it to 99L, much easier that way. Nevertheless, you see the vorticity oval shape stretched out over a fairly large geographic area and as you know that does not bode well for a system to strengthen check this out up here the large extension of what was once nicole sitting up here over the north atlantic Mo uh, monster ocean storm massive ocean storm up over uh, some of the fishing areas you saw the movie the perfect storm you know that the sword boats uh, come out of Gloucester, and they some of them go all the way up here to the North Atlantic, well to the north and east of Cape Race in Newfoundland, and certainly the Maritimes of Canada send their sword boats out this time of year. They'll want to be avoiding this mess, that's for sure. Another little piece of energy way south, probably not of any consequence. We'll see what happens if this makes it over to the Caribbean Sea in about a week, but really nothing showing up in the global models of any concern. Looking at the different plots of the model tracks for this afternoon for 99L, they're probably going to bend back towards the coast and then take off as a trough approaches and boots it out to sea. So again, probably raising some swells, more beach erosion, that's a problem. So indirect uh, effects from this system, indirect impacts uh, along the east coast of the U.S. And then maybe, once it gets its act together, and maybe it'll come up here and bring some beneficial rains to parts of Newfoundland and uh, maybe Nova Scotia. We'll have to see. Uh, hopefully it'll be less windy and stormy than the remnants of Matthew were 
Uh, that was pretty tumultuous up there in Newfoundland. We got some direct reports from a couple of folks that we know up there on social media and through our website. Uh, so maybe you, know, you could use the rain up there. This would help out with that. Looking at the reliable intensity guidance, don't worry about this at all. There's no way this becomes a hurricane, at least in my opinion. A majority of the guidance keeps it you know, even below tropical storm threshold. But I think overall, 40 to 50 mile per hour spread out comma-shaped kind of looking tropical storm or subtropical storm wouldn't surprise me and therefore we could more than likely make it to the 15th name storm of the season. Auto, O-T-T-O, is the next one. Meanwhile, in the Pacific, I don't usually talk about West Pacific systems, but they're fairly common, first of all. Taiwan is used to them. They do fairly well at managing their impacts. The Philippines is used to them, but it's a little different story here. You remember just three years ago, and Super Typhoon Haiyan made its way into the Tacloban area, farther into the central Philippines down here, and that was devastating, horrible. Um, the stuff nightmares are made of when that went through. And so we have this one out here, and uh, Haima, I think is how you say it. Category 5, if it was in the Atlantic, typhoons and hurricanes are the same thing. They're just named differently in different basins of the world. You notice the outflow and the impressive circulation is about as perfect as it gets over the Philippine Sea here. And uh, this is Luzon in the Philippines. And this is going to go right across the northern tip somewhere. I'll show you a track map in a moment. And it's going to be a, a big problem. Uh, massive wind field pushing the Philippine Sea ahead of itself. And you look at this little indention right here this worries me this notch uh, that you get those strong northeast winds if you get that eye wall coming in there really piling the water up in there that could be a huge storm surge area with giant waves on top of it so this is going to be very destructive not to mention the rainfall associated with this enormous circulation over very very warm water temperatures in that region a screenshot from hurricane pro they track the Cyclones of the world, if you don't have this app, it's fantastic. And uh, we do partner with them to share content, uh, Hurricane Pro in HD. And this shows the track over the next few days right now, again, 160 miles per hour. Probably going to go stronger, and then it's going to clip the northern Philippines. Fortunately for Manila, as an example, it is far enough north that it won't be uh, impacting them directly far enough north to keep the worst of the weather away from Manila. A zoomed in uh, focus here on where the track is expected to be over the next few days. Um, wow, just you look at that, you say, my goodness, Cat 5, giant typhoon, right over the northern tip of the Philippines. You know, if you could get it into the area between Taiwan and the Philippines, that would be better, but I don't think that's going to be the case. Strong high pressure to its north, keeping it on a general west northwest trajectory there are a couple of chasers out there james reynolds is in the philippines now and uh, as is josh morgerman you see him on the weather channel quite frequently they are going to have their work cut out for them uh, find those folks on twitter i'll pull their uh, feeds up tomorrow and show you what they were tweeting out but i'm telling you what james and josh both in this area up here are going to have a rough time of it. Uh, it looks like this could hit at nighttime, so whew, I don't know. Uh, for me, I would leave my equipment out in you know the area and then probably go south or something. That's just, especially in the Philippines, it's just different. All right, different nation, obviously, a different everything, the geography, the geology, and these guys, they know their stuff, and uh, we wish them the best of luck. Um, Josh especially will gather some extraordinary pressure data probably if he can get in the eye and do so safely. So, you know, wow. I, just, I cannot imagine. I mean, the folks that live there too. It's just you look at that and you say, my goodness. But the Philippine Sea is one of the most prolific typhoon highways, if you want to call it that, anywhere on Earth, tropical cyclones in general. The Philippine Sea can crank them out better than any place on the planet, it seems. All right, well, that is it for today. Again, really not much happening overall in the Atlantic Basin, as you would expect, as we begin to wind things down. We'll certainly keep an eye on 99L, and if it becomes auto, yeah, we'll see what happens. Probably 
kick up some surf again along the east coast. And other than that, no direct impacts. Have a great rest of your Tuesday afternoon, as always. Thank you for tuning in and listening to what I have to say. I am Mark Suddeth for HurricaneTrack.com, and I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.